Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Wake Up With Joy. Today we will do February 24th reading. Let's go ahead and open up with prayer. Lord God, we are yours today and forever. Whatever you will for us, we accept cheerfully and obediently. Teach us your wisdom, discretion, and sound judgment for everything that we think, say, and do today. Help us to walk in the light of your word and give no place to darkness at all. Help us to be a good steward of our time and of the gifts and calling upon our lives that we may be a blessing to all families and nations of the earth. Help us to win souls, make disciples, and expand your kingdom today. Help us to stay strong in faith, giving glory to God. Help us stay fully persuaded that you will perform what you have promised. Help us to manifest the eternal life that dwells within us. Help us to stay totally alive to God and dead to sin. As Jesus is, help us to be his disciples in this world with his spirit, his body, with his spirit, his body, his faith, his doing his miracles, deliverance, reconciliation, God. Help us let your righteousness reign into eternal life. Help us always love, always forgive, and always bless. Help us be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. Help us to always do those things that please you. And help us to finish your work in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So today, um, we are continuing um, reading in Leviticus. We're in Leviticus, the 21st chapter. And we'll read the entire 21st chapter, and then we'll go into chapter 22. Um, and then from there, uh, we will skip around and go to chapter 25 and chapter 23. Okay, and these are rules for the priests, rules for the priests. And uh, Leviticus 21, verse 1 starts, and it says, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron. And say to them, the priest must not make himself ceremonially unclean for any of his people who die, except for a close relative, such as his mother or father, his son or daughter, his brother or an unmarried sister who is dependent on him, since she has no husband. For her he may make himself unclean. He must not make himself unclean for people related to him by marriage, and so defile himself. Priests must not shave their heads or shave off the edges of their beards or cut their bodies. They must be holy to their God and must not profane the name of their God because they present the offerings made to the Lord by fire, the food of their God. They are to be holy. They must not marry women defiled by prostitution or divorce from their husbands because priests are holy to their God. Regard them as holy because they offer up the food of your God. Consider them holy because I, the Lord, am holy. I who make you holy. If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she disgraces her father. She must be burned in the fire. The high priest, the one among his brothers who has had the anointing oil poured on his head, who has been ordained to wear the priestly garments, must not let his hair become unkempt or tear his clothes. He must not enter a place where there is a dead body. He must not make himself unclean, even for his father or mother, nor leave the sanctuary of his God or desecrate it. Because he has been dedicated by the anointing oil of his God, I am the Lord. The woman he marries must be a virgin. He, he must not marry a widow, a divorced woman, the woman defiled by prostitution, but only a virgin from his own people. So he will not defile his offspring among his people. And I, I am the Lord who makes him holy. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, For the generations to come, none of your descendants who has a defect may come near to offer the food of his God. No man who has any defect may come near. No man who is blind or lame, disfigured or deformed, no man with a crippled foot or hand, or who is hunchbacked or dwarfed, or who has an eye defect, or who has festering or running sores or damaged testicles. No descendant of Aaron, the priest who has any defect, is to come near to present the offerings made to the Lord by fire. He has a defect. He must not come near to offer the food of his God. He may eat the most holy food of his Lord, as well as the holy food, yet because of his defect, he must not go near the curtain or approach the altar, and so desecrate my sanctuary. I am the Lord who makes them holy. So Moses told this to Aaron and his sons, and to all the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to treat with respect the sacred offerings that the Israelites consecrate to me, so they will not profane my holy name. I am the Lord. Say to them, for the generations to come, if any of your descendants is ceremonially unclean and yet comes near the sacred offerings that the Israelites consecrate to the Lord, that person must be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. If a descendant of Aaron has an infectious skin disease or a bodily discharge, he may not eat the sacred offerings until he is cleansed. He will also be unclean if he touches something defiled by a corpse or by anyone who has an emission of semen 
or if he touches any crawling thing that makes him unclean, or any person who makes him unclean, whatever the uncleanness may be. The one who touches any such thing will be unclean till evening. He must not eat any of the sacred offerings unless he has bathed himself with water. When the sun goes down, he will be clean, and after that he may eat the sacred offerings, for they are his food. He must not eat anything found dead or torn by wild animals, and so become unclean through it. I am the Lord. The priests are to keep my requirements so that they do not become guilty and die for treating them with contempt. I am the Lord who makes them holy. No one outside a priest's family may eat the sacred offering, nor may the guest of a priest or his hired worker eat it. But if a priest buys a slave with money, or if a slave is born in the household, the slave may eat his food. If a priest's daughter marries anyone other than a priest, she may, she may not eat of the sacred contributions. But if a priest's daughter becomes a widow, is divorced, yet has no children, and she returns to live in her father's house as in her youth, she may eat of her father's food. No unauthorized person, however, may eat any of it. If anyone eats his sacred offering by mistake, he must make restitution to the priest for the offering and add a fifth of the value to it. The priest must not desecrate the sacred offerings the Israelites present to the Lord by allowing them to eat the sacred offerings and so bring guilt and bring upon them guilt requiring payment. I am the Lord who makes them holy. Now we're in Leviticus the 25th chapter verse 1 through 7. The Lord said to Moses on Mount Sinai, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land I am going to give you, the land itself must observe a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years sow your fields, and for six years prune your vineyards and gather their crops. For in the seventh year the Lord is to have a Sabbath of rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. Do not show your fields or prune your vineyards. Do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the grapes of your un 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 untended vines. The land is to have a year of rest. Whatever the land yields during the Sabbath year will be food for you, for yourself, your manservant, and your inmate servant, and the hired worker and temporary resident who live among you, as well as for your livestock and the wild animals in your land. Whatever the land produces may be eaten. Exodus 23, verse 10 and 11. For six years you are to sow your fields and harvest the crops, but during the seventh year let the land lie unplowed and unused. Then the poor among you, your people may get food from it, and the wild animals may eat what they have. Do the same with your vineyard and your olive grove. Leviticus, the 25th chapter, verse 8 through 10. Actually, it's going to be verses uh, 8 down through verse 55. Okay, so this is going to continue the reading for the day, all of chapter 25. Count all seven Sabbaths of years, seven times seven years, so that the seven Sabbaths of years amount to a period of 49 years. Then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement. Sound the trumpet throughout your land, consecrate the fiftieth year, and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Each one of you is to return to his family property and each of his own clan. The fiftieth year shall be a jubilee for you. Do not sow and do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the untended vines. For it is a jubilee and is to be holy for you. Eat only what is taken directly from the fields. In this year jubilee, everyone is to return to his own property. If you sell land to one of your countrymen or buy any from him, do not take advantage of each other. You are to buy from your countrymen on the basis of the number of years since the jubilee. And he is to sell to you on the basis of the number of years left for harvesting crops. When the years are many, you are to increase the price, and when the years are few, you are to decrease the price, because what he is really selling you is the number of crops. Do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God. I am the Lord your God. Follow my decrees and be careful to obey my laws, and you will live safely in the land. Then the land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your fill and live there in safety. You may ask, what will we eat in the seventh year if we do not plant or harvest our crops? I will send you a blessing in the sixth year that the land will yield enough for three years. While you plant during the eighth year, you will eat from the old crop and will continue to eat from it until the harvest of the ninth year comes in. The land must not be sold permanently because the land is mine and you are but aliens in my tenants. Throughout the country that you hold as a possession, you must provide for the redemption of that land. If one of your countrymen becomes poor and sells some of his property, his nearest relative is to come and redeem what is what his countrymen has sold. 
If, however, a man has no one to redeem it for him, but he himself prepares and acquires sufficient means to redeem it, he is to determine the value for the year since he sold it and since he sold it and refund the balance to the man to whom he sold it. He can then go back to his own property. But if he does not acquire the means to repay him, what he sold will remain in the possession of the buyer until the year of Jubilee. It will be returned in the Jubilee, and he can then go back to his property. If a man sells a house in a walled city, he, he retains the right of redemption a full year after its sale. During that time, he may redeem it. If it is not redeemed before a full year has passed, the house in the walled city shall belong permanently to the buyer and his descendants. It is not to be returned in the Jubilee, but houses and villages without walls around them are to be considered an open country. They can be redeemed, and they are to be returned in the Jubilee. The Levites always have the right to redeem their houses in the Levitical towns, which they possess. So the property of the Levites is redeemable. That is, a house sold in any town they hold, and is to be returned in the Jubilee. Because the houses in the towns of the Levites are their property among the Israelites, but the pastoral land belonging to their towns must not be sold. It is their permanent possession. If one of your countrymen becomes poor among you and sells himself to you, do not make his work as a slave. He is to be treated as a hired worker or a temporary resident among you. Among you, He is to work for you until the year of Jubilee. Then he and his children are to be released, and he will go back to his own clan to the property of his forefathers, because the Israelites are my servants whom I brought out of Egypt. They must not be sold as slaves. Do not rule over them ruthlessly, but fear your God. If an alien or temporary resident among you becomes rich and one of your countrymen becomes poor and sells himself to the alien living among you or to a member of the alien's clan, he retains the right of redemption after he has sold himself. One of his relatives may redeem him. An uncle or a cousin or any blood relative in his clan may redeem him. Or if he prospers, he may redeem himself. He and his buyer are to count the time from the year he sold himself up to the year of Jubilee. The price of his release is to be based on the rate paid to a hired man for that number of years. If, mi if many years remain, he must repay his redemption, a larger share of the price paid for him. If only a few years remain until the year of Jubilee, he is to compute that and pay for his redemption accordingly. He is to be treated as a man hired from year to year. You must see to it that his owner does not rule over him ruthlessly. Even if he is not redeemed in any of these ways, he and his children are to be released in the year of Jubilee. For the Israelites belong to me as servants. They are my servants whom I brought out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. All right, that concludes February the 24th reading. Um, you know, as I'm reading this, um, I think uh, about a few things um, in terms of just our value and our worth to God and how he wants our freedom. That's what stands out to me. How he wants our freedom. Um, so two things have has to happen. We need to be free in body, soul, and spirit, right? And how he talked about a Sabbath rest day, that rest helps to free our souls, you know? Um, get your mind off certain things. Uh, don't work today. Sit back and relax. Rejuvenate. Replenish. And so that, so taking a time of rest is important. He even wanted the land to rest. He said, don't rest, work the land in the seventh years, seventh year. So, so that whole idea of rest and rejuvenation is important for our soul and our body, for the things around us. So he wants us free that way. But he also wants us to feel free and not be in bondage to anybody else. So I was, you know, as we're reading, he, he, there are these rules that were set up about the purchase of property and the sale of property. Um, and so rules in terms of how we co covenant or contract with people is important. And those rules are to be followed because they, they had those rules even, even then. But what I was thinking about in terms of the debt with, that people were in, he said, you know, on the year of Jubilee, people are to be completely free of this debt, completely free of it. They're to be released. Regardless of the other things that I put into place, release them. Why? He says here, he says, 
even if he is not redeemed in any of these ways, all these things that the Lord had talked about, he says, he and his children are to be released in the year of Jubilee for the Israelites belong to me. God wants whoever is connected to him to be free. So he provided a way for that in the Old Testament. But my God, when Jesus came, he really, really, really paid for our freedom. The thing is, we don't recognize that we're supposed to be free from these things. And sometimes we walk into places of bondage. When we should when we're already freed and released from bondage, we just have to trust God. Sometimes we choose bondage because we think we don't have choices. So that that's why hearing God's voice is so important. Freedom for His people was was important to God in the Old Testament. It was important to God in the New Testament. It's important to God for us now. Our freedom, our, for us not to be in bondage to anybody, but us to have ownership. Ownership of property, ownership of, of cattle and animals, of the things that produce in the earth, that create a living. Ownership was important to him then. Freedom was important to him then. It is important now. Amen. All right, so that's all I have for today. Say with me our confession. Today is my best day. Today is a perfect day. I decree that today and all the days of my life, that I am operating at my best that I am bearing much fruit, that I'm flowing with and following the direction of the Holy Ghost. I'm strong in my body, energized and refreshed. I am strong in my soul, alert, vibrant, and discerning. I'm strong in my spirit, acting in wisdom and revelation. I plan my way and God directs my steps. I maximize my time and resources. I am purpose driven and I bring every project to its prosperous conclusion. My attitude is triumphant. My appearance is impeccable. My manner is culture. I have a godly heritage. I am from good blood. My victory is apparent to all, but God's word is my constant meditation. In my daily fellowship is with my heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Join me tomorrow for more Wake Up With Joy. And remember to let the word light the way. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Redeemer is your name. Redeemer is your name. I need you to light the way, yeah. I want to be more like you. Restored in new